talk us through how does the menstrual cycle function firstly as a bit of an intro yeah it's probably good context for the rest of the the chat but um the menstrual cycle um if we talk about a 28 day cycle knowing that a normal cycle can last from anywhere between 21 and 35 days but if we talk about a 28 day cycle just for this context um yep. it's separated into two phases so the first is a follicular phase which will last about 14 days and the second is the luteal phase, which will last that second 14 days. And you have ovulation in the middle there and the bleeding at the start of the follicular phase. So those are the two phases that we're working with. Like I said, there obviously is a lot of variability in cycle length. So we also know that most of that variability comes about from the follicular phase. So most women will actually have about a 14, 15 day luteal phase. That's pretty consistent. So you can actually count back from the start of your cycle and work out when you ovulated in the previous cycle by counting that 14 days back. And so if you have a, a short cycle, you know that your follicular phase is probably shorter. Or if you have a long cycle, it's because that follicular phase is longer. And from a, a training perspective, um, how does it change when you're in the first sort of 15 days of your cycle to the second phase of, of your cycle? Yeah, so from a training perspective, um, I guess I want to preface this by saying that a lot of the data at the moment coming out in the research isn't um, that strong yet. Um, and mm -hmm. so a lot of the recommendations need to be taken with a lot of caution and you really should be working out what works for you individually. But based on the research that has come out, um, we think that performance might have a trivial decrease um, during the early follicular phase, so that bleeding phase. Um, so performance yeah. might be decreased during that phase. But at the same time, there's evidence that shows that sprint um, performance is increased during that phase. So again, um, it's about working out what works for you. You mentioned monitoring your cycle. So, um, what, what, how would what would be your recommended um, approach? So, uh, how, you know, how much time should you be spending? Is it a daily ritual? Is it a weekly? Um, what, what would you be a recommendation for young athletes? To start with, it probably needs to be daily. Um, just if you're trying to work out how each different phase affects you, if you just want to know when you're going to get your cycle, you can just do it monthly. That's fine. Um, but if yep. you want to really have a solid understanding of how each phase and the way your body changes across those phases affects your, your training, your mood, your sleep, all of those sorts of things, your recovery, um, you're best to do it daily. There's some really mm. great apps out there um fitter woman is one of the the better ones and really athlete specific what about common misconceptions and from from athletes or, or coaches what, it, what what's out there that's pops up um i think probably that this is a female only space i mean um i think there's probably a lot of taboo around around talking about menstrual cycles and things like that particularly from you know male coaches and things like that and i think it's something that we can do better at opening up it doesn't mean that we all have to you know deep dive on the topic and things like that but it's just about being able to have conversations with your athletes regardless of your gender um so yeah i think that's one of the biggest things just being able to have conversations with your athletes um about how they're feeling um because that's how you build trust and buy into a program as well